Hi, this video is gonna be a little weird because I'm doing this kind of on the fly. I just got off work and I'm very tired, but this was fresh in my mind, so I just wanted to get it out. My brother-in-law texted me to, uh, to talk about my opinions on trigger warnings and it was framed as if I had them when I was in school. I went to Catholic school up until um, the end of high school so we didn't really deal with topics that were that intense that would require a trigger warning. Um, there's always a lot of death in the Bible but and you know rape but overall it was before my time that trigger warnings really had taken off and so I told him as much and my brother-in-law had his opinions about trigger warnings and I had mine and I will talk about mine later on but first I want to talk about the article because I thought the article was while I disagree with the overall idea of it very interesting it was basically talking about how this new mentality of political correctness is coddling young Americans because they're not learning how they're supposed to they're being too emotional too concerned with themselves and their feelings and are quick to judge other people based on what may end up being mistakes or errors in tone and it's creating a mentality that is counterproductive towards education because educators are now having to second guess how they teach material in order to not be accused of being racist, sexist, homophobic, etc. And I guess for me the first thing I realized about this article is it clearly at least in my opinion, is not written towards people of color or minorities. It's it seems to be written towards the people who are going to be accused of these issues, and it and even though of course they're going to be non-white people in academia. Um, it very much is talking to that older generation of teachers who are just sort of having to deal with this new thing going on of people being much more aware of sort of like social justice and those kind of things and of course even with our generation today there is a huge backlash and fight towards people who are social justice inclined and people who think that they're all social justice warriors and then social justice warriors and then social justice people and it's all kind of in this huge internet zone that has leaked outward because young people are on the internet all the time and some of the things that the article brought up was this idea of like vindictive protectiveness that quote the aim is to turn campuses into safe spaces for young adults and punish anyone who interferes with that aim even accidentally. It is creating a culture in which everyone must think twice before speaking up lest they face charges of insensitivity, aggression, or worse. And they speak initially about the rise in the 80s and 90s of parents not letting their children go outside and bike. And immediately I knew where this was that this was had a disconnect with certain people because it's like I grew up in the ghetto like the real ghetto East New York murder capital of Brooklyn I couldn't go outside because my parents didn't want me to get shot you know and I did not grow up being sheltered from the realities of life and the thing that they don't understand is that a lot of people that are not thought about in this article grow up not growing up in this bubble of security that they feel like children grow up with. A lot of people have this idea about childhood, about you being innocent and untouched and not knowing real struggle. You can be a child and know what real struggle is from your everyday life. You know, there are, there are people who grow up in slums. There are people who grow up in reservations. There are people who grow up in the ghetto who see alcoholism, abuse, seen rape, have been raped, have been through domestic squabbles. There are people who go through this stuff all the time and maybe in their schools they and in their regular social circle they don't want to deal with reminders of that all the time. And I'm not trying to say that people should all be punished for inadvertently causing harm, but they should be told, hey, what you said was fucked up. And the quote about creating a culture where every month everyone must think twice why shouldn't you? I find that idea that thinking before you speaking is being wrong so strange. I was always taught to do that, to think twice before you say something because you don't want to be rude. And isn't this just an extension of what we're taught when we're kids of not being rude on purpose? Why instead of when someone tells you, hey, that was offensive and it's coming from a place of un honest, not pretentious, concern why instead of saying hmm or being introspective do you go into defensive and saying oh you're just too sensitive 
why is it never taken as a way for you to improve as a person and instead being seen as a way to attack others for being too quote unquote soft and I understand it's a it's a hard thing to do I had to deal with that too of learning to not be upset with someone that called me you know being you know being very cis thinking I had to be like at first I was like what are you talking about I don't care I mean I love trans people and I had to realize but I do that, you know what I mean? I do think in one lens most of the time because that's my lens. And you have to be told to thought otherwise. And what people should be learning in school is to think outside of their own perspective, which is why we need diverse books so important because people will learn that through reading. But then the other issues are people who don't want to read about rape or those kind of things in text. There's an examples from other teachers, anecdotes about a teacher who put up a picture of um, the sirens being su su trying to seduce um, Odysseus in the um, in the Odyssey and someone wanted to talk about how the picture was sensitive towards women because the sirens were naked. Now these are things that if I were a teacher I would I would have my ways of retorting it because I've grown up in this sphere of Tumblr where these are things that people talk about all the time. I wouldn't be like oh my god I can never show a naked woman in class again. You know you would I would understand that like okay I get that you feel insulted by this but there's a larger thing going on here besides this minor thing like does nudity with women always have to be completely sexual does it have to instantly mean something else it could mean this you can have a dialogue with these students through email or whatever you just don't know how or choose not to that's on you as the person who's teaching the lesson I mean I just finished taking a course in children's literature and I disagreed with my professor and I disagreed with him openly and we had discussion about it because that's what you do in academic society you discuss things that you don't agree with not just say oh you shouldn't speak and you shouldn't feel the way you feel about these issues the other thing the article says about um, I'm offended is a trump card. For whom? I mean, I went to a majority white school. There were times I was the only black person in any of my literature classes, with the exception of one other black English major, and I have never felt a pressing need to be sensitive to my needs as a black person in a majority white environment. The only time I ever heard racism talked about by faculty was when I was in the student government, and that was it. And I was in a lot of government things when I was a, a student, an undergraduate. And so maybe I never experienced this kind of protection tr get for minority students, but I heard, I've never seen people be out of their way to try and make minorities feel comfortable in situations where they are very much dealing with feeling like a minority. I mean, there's no transition program to tell you how to survive in a majority white environment. You know, when you go to these schools, it's just kind of like you go and you blend in or you don't. And maybe it's with bigger schools because the thing about like a lot of schools they don't want to deal with lawsuits because they they have a reputation to uphold and they cannot have people talking about these things in the media and making them look bad because it doesn't want people to go to their schools just like with rape trials they don't want to deal with that whole drama so they'll you know settle it within the school itself so there's a lot of politics going on around that as well and then the other thing is a lot of the the laws have changed apparently like usually if you had to say that it was offensive you had to say it was objectively offensive and this is something that i think is really interesting because this has changed the internet has made this change and it has led to us having to have a new understanding of what we view as offensive because there are things that we have been taught for generations is not offensive that have been offensive but the people who were offended by it never had a chance to vocalize it until now and a lot of us grew up with the word and I know it's a slur I apologize for saying it right now but I just need to make this point and I apologize again gypsy we grew up with the word gypsy being used in our vernacular all the time and I of course you know Hunchback of Notre Dame um cheer music a bunch of stuff there's a Hillary song song a Hillary song song a Hillary Duff song with the word in it and I never would have thought it was a slur because it's in our pop culture. No one, no one told me that. It wasn't until later I found out that for the Roma people, it's a very sensitive word for them because of the history of how they've been treated. And no one thinks about that. You're not taught that in, in school. You're not taught how to be sensitive to these issues. You find out through being called out now on the internet. And we should be told these things. I mean, people are just now being able to understand trans trans issues because transgender people now have a voice in the media that's how things grow and evolve 
when the voiceless finally have a voice, you learn their issues. You learn what have always bothered them. It's just, but before you never had to listen because if you didn't be in that environment, you weren't in that environment, you didn't have to hear it. But now you have to. And now schools are having to deal with this more and more so because the internet is crossing those borders that, you know, community, those communal borders that usually you couldn't just go through it. And it's integrating the world more so than they knew before. And they now have to deal with that in higher education. And some of the stories, I feel like, you know, there's a woman who talked about she's a rape, she's a lawyer, and some of the students don't want to deal with rape law. And I'm just like, if you're a lawyer, then you should deal with it. You know what I mean? Like, there are obviously cases where it's like, okay, you're just learning about these issues. They mean a lot to you right now, but you're just a, kind of like a youthful zeal to them that is not pragmatic, but is definitely there that I can understand. But you as an educator, is it not your job to help guide these kids through these things? I mean, maybe I've had teachers who do that for me, and that's why I think that teachers should do that in general. Maybe they don't have the time. These are big schools. They have to deal with a lot of students. They don't have time to do individual things. But I just feel like part of being in education is, is being taught to think. Not to think, but how to think and how to have critical thinking skills. And if you're giving these students these critical thinking skills, won't they be able to come out the right way with these ideas? But maybe that's me being ignorant because I'm not an educator in that way. I've just been in education for a long time as a student and in higher education as someone who got their master's degree and has had these discussions in those environments. So I don't necessarily understand why being aware of how people are affected by what you say is a bad thing. Maybe it's because I don't want to hurt people with my words. I don't want to be a part of a larger problem of being ignorant of other people's needs and the stereotypes that we perpetuate in our world. And I don't want to perpetuate those things. I just, I don't want to. I want to be told I'm being wrong about certain issues so I can do better because I want to be a better person. And it doesn't mean I'm not educated. It doesn't mean I don't have, I can't understand like other sides. It doesn't mean that I can't, that I'm not problematic in my own way. Like I, you know, I'm not perfect. I definitely slip up. I definitely say words I shouldn't say. I definitely laugh at jokes that are not okay. I mean, I watch Judd Apatow movies, for God's sakes. I watch Kevin Smith movies. Like, I'm not perfect. But I do understand the larger social contexts of things that go around. As for the topic of trigger warnings, um, I, I did not always have a trigger warning. I did not always have that issue in my life. Um, even though I self-harmed, even though I tried to hurt myself as I was growing up, those things did not affect me to see in other, in other things. Like when I know when people cut and those kind of things or try to commit suicide themselves, those things would not make me want to do those things in return. I didn't have that kind of trigger. Um, sorry, I'm fiddling with my pen because I'm trying not to get emotional. However, in November, my cousin committed suicide. He hung himself. And ever since then, I have had a trigger. And even though I was not there when he did it, even though I did not see his body until after, until the funeral happened, I knew how he was found and knew how my mother saw him. And I also was filled with a lot of personal regret because I had not spoken to him. And because as someone who went through a lot of the issues that he was going through, I felt guilty for not being there for him while he was going through this. And so ever since then, I cannot see a hanging, whether it be suicide or not, without feeling very emotionally upset. All those feelings are still fresh. It's not even been a year since he's passed away. And it's something that I have found that I have to deal with a lot. Because hanging is a very common thing in media. It's you know, I was just last night I was watching Changeling and at the end the guy is hung and I was okay for the most of it. I was alright with the putting the noose around his head, everything. When he dropped, I felt like I was gonna puke. Usually these hangings are like major plot details or character details. There's not gonna be any sign that says, Hey, someone's gonna get hanged right now. However, it's it's very hard to to deal with and I'm not ready yet to deal with that and I would like to when I'm on the internet not have to deal with that stuff it doesn't mean I don't have a sense of humor still like I I had been talking 
to one of my friends and we talked about you know how most people commit suicide in the winter time and I didn't get triggered by that it's not speaking it or talking about it all the time so it's the visual that will trigger something in my brain and that's something that didn't happen physically to me you know what I mean I was not raped I was not assaulted and I still had that visceral reaction to that happened secondhand to me so I can't imagine what it's like if it were something that did affect me so personally physically personally and ever since then I get it because it's it's not about being weak it's not about not being able to deal with reality it's about I don't want to deal with this when I don't have to and should colleges be uber safe but I can like I said no one ever made those excuses to me and the microaggression argument is just like sometimes you want these things to be written by people who deal with those kind of things in their day-to-day -day life like I this is not a microaggression this is what I talk when I was in school I had a lot more white people in my in my circle of friends and I had black people not by choice, not by trying. I was definitely friends with plenty of black, the black, plenty of the black kids at my school, but a lot of my close, my close friends were, were white, and sometimes they would say something, and I would feel awkward about what I should do, and I wouldn't say anything because I didn't want to be the angry black person. I didn't want to be in this majority white school, be the militant, because if you said anything pro-black, you were seen as militant, and. I did not want to deal with that, you know. When I started college, I was 17. I had just turned 17 when I when I went to college. I was not ready mentally or emotionally to deal with those kind of things, and I I didn't want to be antagonistic. I, I made friends. I had friends. I thought they can't be racist. They like me, even though they would say racist things around me. I was just like, well, you know, I, I there was no explanation for it. I just I did not want to be the person who caused trouble. To be the black girl who caused trouble and that's more damaging than being called a racist like to, to not to be so afraid of not saying anything that you'll let people say slurs and say things like that around you even when it hurts you but not saying anything because you don't want to be seen as uppity that's worse than being called a racist even being called a racist wrongly because you're being you're feeling your very identity being attacked but then they'll say, oh, you're a good one. To say as if it doesn't bother you, it doesn't affect you. I mean, even now, when people will say very anti-gay things, I'll be like, guys, I'm bi. Like, it, you, just because you don't can't tell, it doesn't affect you, doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. And it'll even be little things, like if, like, when you're in a history course and, you know, civil rights and slavery comes up and everyone looks at you for your opinions to see what you have to say and if anyone says anything else you're like but oh but you know I, there was a part and it wasn't an aggression but it's just kind of the thing like the only person if I didn't hear would have been you know me and I was kind of like yeah that's kind of awkward you know there's nothing to prepare you for that for that awkwardness for that uh, to, to that kind of like yeah I'm the only one here who would have been affected by slavery directly or be affected by these Jim Crow laws like everyone else is just visiting it secondhand and with you because you're a minority people look at you like so you have insight you have knowledge secret knowledge in that brain and I remember in one of my vampire courses um, we were watching Blackula and one of my friends this is not an aggression but just something I think is just funny was like People, most people there hated it. I didn't particularly enjoy it, but I guess I like my quotation, so I got a kick out of it. And he asked me, so, so are you, do you enjoy this? Are you liking it? You know, to sort of like, to vindicate him not liking it. He had to make sure that I didn't like it so that he would be okay with it. And, you know, I was just kind of like, it's, you know, it's, it's of its time. I don't like it. I don't love it, but I'm not like upset about it. You know what I mean? It's like, what am I supposed to say? Like, oh, if you don't like Blackula, you're a racist. I just like, I, not it's not that big of a deal and being a critical thinker helps you differentiate those things I wasn't assaulted by him by like because I'm black I have to like blackula I was more like oh he thinks he needs to care what I think about blackula you know when you're a critical thinker you can balance those things out and you're just kind of like most of the time if I, the people I follow on tumblr are social justice people and people ask them questions about like refund but it's like not really but like I'm not gonna go and be like oh y'all are tripping because you don't want to be used as a person to be like well that person said it was okay for me to do blackface so I'm gonna keep doing it like one of the things that I that I talk about like Tropic Thunder I think that movie's hilarious I am not bothered by Robert Downey Jr's blackface however I don't 
advertise that besides right now because I don't want people to be like well Melina likes that thing so why is all that face wrong and no 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 like I'm allowed to like fucked up things but know they're fucked up and not have a cause of face reaction to it like it's it affects everyone differently. Everyone's affected by it differently. It's, we're not a monolith, you know? Not everyone is affected by racism and by things like that. So, yes, I'm not offended by the blackface, but I still think that blackface is wrong. I'm not saying, oh, he did it, so it's okay for everyone to do it. I'm just saying that when I saw it, it was not the thing that was like, I was like, I was like, oh my god, I hate this. But I wasn't also like people who were like, oh my god, I hate this. I wasn't like, why are you tripping? I was like, okay, they saw it that way and they were hurt by it. I was not. It's one of those things that makes it hard, like, when people are like, well, I'm this, and I'm not offended by this. It's kind of like, okay, like, you're allowed not to be, but that does not mean that everyone else who's speaking about it is, like, off their fucking rocker. And I just, this whole conversation frustrates me because it's like, liberal people, progressives, are, like, so afraid of having to think before they speak about, to realize that they're not as progressive or as liberal as they think they are. Like, it's hard! I know, I've had to deal with it. I've had to deal with the fact that I was a shit feminist until I was, like, 20. You know, I, I... It's hard to realize that you were fucked up or part of a problem, but the quicker you realize it, you can fix it. Then rather than you just being like, oh, people think I'm racist and homophobic. Why do you think you did that? Just, just work on yourself. And if you feel like it's, you know, youthful exaggeration, well, deconstruct that. I mean, if you are about academics and intellectualism, be an intellectual, be an academic, discuss, discern, ask questions don't just be like oh everyone who doesn't agree with me is too fucking sensitive and y'all can't take jokes i have been on youtube since i was 16 and have dealt with so much racism in that time i can tell you that me saying i'm offended by something does not make anyone sit down and say you know what if you're offended by it i'm gonna stop calling you an ugly black bitch i'm gonna stop saying that you're an idiot and that you are a stupid black bitch i'm gonna do that because you were offended that's not the way the world works you know, I, I was in school, and we were talking about Iola Leroy, and we were talking about um, racism and stuff, but, and, and people were so liberally using the term mulatto. You know, white people were using the term mulatto. And, and the black girls and myself, like, I was part of this kind of like the black girl crew, that people thought were all militant when I, this is in my um, master year. And we were telling them, like, you can't fucking just be blowing out mulatto. Like, it's not... You realize that that's not a word that you just, that you just throw out in like a non-historical context. It's not a, a good word. And they're like, oh, okay. And it got to the point where like they would just throw out these really like aggr microaggressive things about saying like, oh, you know, black life is like poverty and poor and the streets and white life is like, you know, the proper world and whatever. Like it would just get to the point where we're just kind of like, do you guys not realize what you're talking about, how, what you guys are saying? And this was in a master's student environment, which meant that everyone here was getting their master's degree and half of them were people who were working in education. So you are going to be an educator, but you don't understand that mulatto is a bad word to say in a non-historical context and we're bad for telling you that it is even in higher academia there's still people who don't get it and refuse to get it unless it affects them personally and we have to be above that to really be liberal and progressive both in our own lives and in academics